being fabulous at 50? Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Best Years Podcast. This is Dr. Darlene speaking to Generation X and baby boomers who want more. I'll share power, skills, and tools with you to get your mojo back and love your life. So you're 50-ish. The kids are leaving the nest. Or you've had a nice career, you don't have kids, and you might get a divorce. And all of a sudden you find yourself at 50. You find yourself in this place. Maybe you're single for the first time. Maybe you just got married for the first time. Well, wait a minute. Who am I? And that's what happens around this time. Our bodies are changing again like puberty the other direction with menopause. Our emotions are weird. And who are we now? So it's about reinventing yourself. Today's podcast, Being Fabulous at 50, Yes Indeed, is about kind of a subwoofer here. It's kind of to motivate you to say, go girl, you can do this. You're going to reinvent yourself and it doesn't have to be all at once today. The first step to reinventing yourself is get your butt up and get out the door and go do something. Get busy, get busy, go work somewhere, go work at Starbucks, get your body out there, start getting social, start getting cuter, start getting your body the way you want it. It's time to really focus on yourself and have your best years ahead of you here. How do you recreate yourself? And what does that mean? Who am I? So let's just start with how we get out the door. Getting out the door can be social or it can be alone. And I just did a podcast, uh, another one this morning about, I forgot what I called it, something about um, being alone with yourself and how great it can be and how you're not lonely because you're the coolest girl ever. So get out. Get your body out the door. Get up on time. Set the alarm. There's no kids in the house for the first time. Or my spouse isn't here for the first time. Or I don't have roommates for the first time. And there it is silent. Hey, let's love it. We can hear ourselves think. But get up, get ready, get out the door, whether you're going to go to breakfast with yourself or what are you going to do? Now, what do you wear? Now, again, this podcast is general just general motivating to say you can do it and with a few things in mind and how you can be completely fabulous. (laughs) Dressing your age. Let's talk about that. Dressing your truth is really a great topic. Carol Tuttle talks about it. I would really recommend you checking that out because Shirley talks about what is it that dresses your truth and not dressing who you're not. I remember I worked in a a delinquent facility for, for youth and they kept telling me to dress down, dress down. I finally took my nails off, my earrings off. I hardly wore makeup. I just kept dressing down and they kept telling me more and more. And finally, I just couldn't dress down enough with a sweatshirt and baggier pants and stupid shoes. And they still told me to dress down. And I thought, huh, that's interesting because there's kind of no way I can. Um, Okay, fine. I could not color my hair. But all of a sudden I said, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm an expressive person. And I express myself through what I wear. So I quit. And you want to have your dress your truth, but you also want to live your truth. And if you're expressive, do it. Yay, we're not judgmental. So we're not going to judge right or wrong. Judging means we deem it right or wrong. So I'm not going to judge you, and you're not going to judge me of what's right or wrong. For me, I love earrings. I like to be creative. And I love jewelry and, and hippie pants. I have a bunch of hippie pants I got on Venice Beach. And let me tell you the truth about this. And we'll talk more in another podcast about specifically dressing our age. But to just touch on it, we don't really dress our bodies as much as we dress our insides. If you're a sexy person, you want to feel sexy and you're super overweight, you're still going to dress sexy. If you have a beautiful body, but you're super conservative, then you will probably dress conservative. So that's why we can look at someone, not that you're judging it right or wrong, but we can observe and learn a whole lot from a person based on how they dress. Because they're dressing the way they feel inside. And our bodies are a reflection of how we feel inside. If we're overweight, if we're out of shape, if we are sedentary, our bodies, our physical bodies are a reflection of our insides. 
We'll talk more about physical fitness as well in other podcasts. But for today, just realize speaking your truth and being who you are and being your best is what you can do at this age. And literally, they can be the best years of your life because you're going to express yourself. You're going to look good that you feel is good. You're going to feel fresh. Dressing your age? Hmm. So what if your body is your 25 to 30 year old body, at least I say in the dark from a distance, I look young, (laughs) dim light far away. But let's say if your body is like a 30 year old body, ish, 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 do you dress like you're 30? I don't know. Hmm. So I teach college to those that are in their twenties and I kind of do dress like them and I'm 61. But I do it with a twist. I do it with a, I don't know how I do it. Somehow I feel good about what I wear and I change it up. One day I'll wear a conservative dress. Another day raggy Levi's with the ripped Levi's in them. And with a conservative top. Sometimes I wear those little flat tanny sketchers. And sometimes I wear tall shoes. So we can change it up so that you're not always trying to look like a teenager, but you can pop in and out of it. So this is subjective and... When I do a group workshop on this, it'd be super fun to talk to a lot of you so you can add your thoughts on how you specifically dress your age, but yet don't dress your age because we have this energy and passion for life. So reinventing yourself, you want to do that. Uh, Fashion over 50 is subjective. There's a woman out that's becoming super popular. I I apologize. I don't know her name. I will look her up. She's on Facebook and YouTube and she's 60, 70. I think she's maybe mid sixties and she has short blonde, blonde hair and she dresses in furs and the funkiest dressing ever. And she's like, who cares? Sport it. Why is there a parameter on how I should dress? So that's really, really cool. And I love looking at that and realizing that that's a role model for me. Hey, express yourself however you want. Now let's transition into how we behave. If you're a single person and you're single or you're married, you can still flirt with the person of your choice and still have that sexual energy to be able to connect to that person that you're attracted to. Girls, if you put your chin down with your eyes up, that's a flirty position. (laughs) If you play with your hair, even short hair, you just kind of stroke your hair. You kind of run your fingers through it. That's kind of flirty. And that's kind of a way to totally be fabulous. And tease with your person. Maybe, okay, fine, sex, text, keep them mild. But just little acronyms that you both may know. So that's a mojo thing. To be fabulous sexually and be alive. Get your hormones balanced. Get in there and whatever you have to do to get your hormones balanced. Eat healthy. Eat bad when you want to because you can. And get busy. Get out there. Be yourself. Find yourself. We're all finding ourselves. It's not an end goal. It's that I'm busy finding myself and I'm having fun doing it. So be fabulous. When we have a workshop, I'll be excited to hear what you have to say and make comments below. How are you fabulous? 50 plus. Let's do it with the best years of our life. Have a great day. Have a fabulous day. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to my channel so we can hang out. Also go to www.whatstopsyou.com for notes to this podcast and learn more power skills to Indeed live the best years of your life.